So hello, I am currently in the lovely little village of Hainton in Lincolnshire, in the churchyard of St Mary. Hainton is a delightful little estate village just on the edge of the Lincolnshire Walls, an estate that has been in the same family continuously since the 15th century, the Hennage family. So just uh, pan over to the left, you will see the back of Hainton Hall where they still live. Uh, St Mary's Church is a really splendid church, restored by the Gothic revivalist E.J. Wilson in the 1840s. Inside it is a treasure house of monuments. So I'm just coming to the south door and let's go in. It is rather a dull building architecturally due to E.J. Wilson's work. Um, very Victorianised on the inside, though there are 14th century piers. <laughs> Curiosity here, all the little poppy heads of the nave pews have bags on them, protective bags. Now, this church until relatively recently wasn't very well looked after at all. Uh, but now it is, it's sparkling and looking very well indeed. So heading east, there is a rood screen here, which is uh, by E.J. Wilson from the 1840s. And you'll notice, as I pan round to the left and to the head of the north aisle, there are some 17th century railings and tantalizingly behind them, you can see some monuments. That's where we're heading. So heading into the chancel first, through the rood screen. Looking east in the chancel. Oh, a monument there. I'll have a look at that in a second. And I'll just give you a little tantalizing glimpse into the chapel which we're heading to in a moment. So the Hennage family. The Hennage family have been here since at least the 14th century. And they've owned the manor here um, from the early 15th century onwards. But they really began to make their name at the beginning of the 16th century. They were minor gentry, but they were also lawyers. And they were quite canny people, really. Um, John Hellidge, living in the early 16th century and the late 15th century, was an MP for Grimsby. And he clearly had good connections because his son, whose monument is here, Thomas Hennage was a very, very important person indeed. Now I'm going to go and um, back off a little bit so you can see this monument uh, in its full glory. So this is on the north side of the chancel, the monument to Thomas Hennage. Uh, I suspect erected during his lifetime and I imagine intended to be the base of an Easter sepulchre. So made of perbet marble. Now, uh, there's the base of the tomb chest, which is perbet marble, a curious thing it is. And on the back wall, there are brasses, mural brasses, to Thomas Hennage and his family. So there he is. Now, brasses are probably 19th century replacements of the original. You can see there's Thomas Hennage in his heraldic tabard and his wife, who is the daughter of another Lincolnshire landowner, John Skipwith of South Ormsby, and their only daughter, who, Elizabeth, who married Lord Willoughby of Parham. Now, as so I said, Thomas Hennage was a very important person. He initially found service with Cardinal Wolsey. He was Wolsey's clerk and one of the gentlemen of Wolsey's household. But well, when Wolsey fell, the king took him directly into his service. And as the inscription says on the bottom here, here under lieth Sir Thomas Hennage, knight, he became Chief Gentleman of the Privy Chamber 
to the king of famous memory, King Henry VIII. So he became chief gentleman of the Privy Chamber, one of the king's most intimate servants, and as chief gentleman, he was also groom of the stool, meaning he had charge of the king's garderobe, the king's toilet. So he was one of the people who was closest to the king and also dressed him and dealt with his daily needs and necessities. So a very important person he was. And as groom of the stool, he was also keeper of the king's privy purse. So lots of money coming into the king's household would have gone through his hands. And he really cemented the family's fortunes through that service. Now he had one daughter, as you see on the brass here. So he was succeeded by his brother. And we need to come into the chapel now. So as we do so, another 17th century railings, you will see over here in that little classical doorway with the date 1694 on it. Though the chapel itself, as you can see from this arch, is earlier, and I suspect is 16th century. So let's come into the family chapel of the Henages. Uh, so immediately in front of us, though it's a modern replacement, the tomb chest, is the brass to Sir Thomas Henage's father, John Henage, MP for Grimsby who died in 1530. Managed to get his son into Wolsey's favour. Now just to the left of that is the second son of John Hennage and the brother of Thomas, who's also called John Hennage. And it's a fantastic classical monument, probably dating from the 1570s or thereabouts when this John Henage's wife died. This man, in fact, died in 1557, only shortly after his elder brother, Thomas. Now, while Thomas was in uh, London at the court, it seems that John Henage here was the person doing all the donkey work in Lincolnshire. And he followed his father as MP for Grimsby but he was also a bit of a doer too. During the dissolution of the monasteries, John Hennage dissolved five monasteries in Lincolnshire. As a consequence of that work, was able to enrich his family and extend his family estates by buying monastic lands, particularly the little Gilbertine Priory at Six Hills down the road, and Six Hills Grange at Great Towers, which is where he seems to have lived. His wife on this side here is uh, Anne Cope. So Thomas was the one making connections in London, and John, his younger brother, was the person doing all the work in Lincolnshire, extending the family estates which would become the estates of his own sons, George and William, who we'll see in a moment. Now, I think this chapel was probably constructed either by this John or by his father John uh, in the early years of the 16th century. Now, on the floor of the chapel here, is the monumental brass of an earlier generation of this family, um, way before they uh, became so connected to the higher echelons of uh, um, English society. And this is to John Hennage, who died in 1435, dressed in civilian dress, uh, with his wife beside him, his wife Alice, So John Hennage, 
uh, consolidated the family fortunes through the connections of his brother Thomas in London. Now, he had two sons, the eldest of whom was George Henage. And I have to step back so you can see this fantastic monument. In fact, I might just stand on a chair for a second so you can see it from above. So this very fine monument, probably made in Southwark at the end of the 16th century of Alabaster, is to George Henage, the son of John, the eldest son of John, who had no children. Really is a very fine monument. I'm just going to step down again and we're going to have a look at some details of it. I hope you don't get dizzy as I come down. So George, through the good offices of his uncle Thomas, also ended up really rather well connected. He entered the household of Edmund Bonner, who is the Bishop of London. And he went with Edmund Bonner as his principal gentleman and secretary to the embassy that Bonner had been given by Henry VIII to the court of France. He did that when he was a very young man indeed. He continued in royal service, um, he continued, entered royal service and continued in service all the way through Elizabeth's reign until 1595, when he died at the age of 74. He's shown here dressed in full plate armour. Absolutely fantastic. And at his feet, Though sadly headless. Now I think this is probably, the head has probably gone off for conservation. One of the, f um, the feet is missing too. But the, um, the crest of the Henage family is uh, a greyhound. So um, George has that crest at his feet. This is very fine indeed. So another Henage who uh, uh, found service in a bishop's household and did very well for himself and inherited uh, his father's estates here, centred in Hainton. I've just noticed here, just in the floor, you can see the entrance to the burial vault. So there is a burial vault of the family um, below this side chapel. And then, when George died at the end of the 15, middle of the 1590s, his brother William inherited the estates here, and this is William's monument. Absolutely fantastic bit of Southwark work again, and very fine alabaster with lots of polychromy. He is shown kneeling at a pre dieu with his two wives, and then down below, his two sons and his two daughters. Let's come in and look at this in some detail. It really is a fantastic monument. Very, very fine quality. So there is William. He was in his 90s when he died. In 1610, he was 91 when he died. Now, two wives here. His first wife was Anne Fishbourne, and she's shown at the back there. And she died in 1585. And then after that, he marries um, this lady here, Jane Brussels, who the monument says did serve our sovereign Queen Elizabeth in her bedchamber and in her privy chamber by the space of 24 years. So Jane was one of the intimate servants of Queen Elizabeth I.
Up above there's a huge armorial with a figure of an angel blowing the last trump upon top. On an either side are two other panels, one with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, a quote from 1 Corinthians 15, um, as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. And then as we pan through, is a panel of Christ rising from the tomb. The wonderful hope of the Christian faith expressed in that. So that is William. So three generations here um, who managed to um, consolidate their position in society through service both to bishops and to the king and to the royal court. Now, at some point along the line, the Hedge family become recusants. Seems to have occurred in the 17th century. They were conforming to the Anglican faith uh, in the 16th century in the reign of Elizabeth, but sometime in the 17th century, um, they become recusants, but they, they become Catholics. And there are two monuments here to the family from that period. Now this wonderful tablet here by William Stanton is to three generations of the family. It commemorates William's grandson George and his son George and his grandson George, the last George dying in 1692. Now, William Stanton really was a very fine sculptor indeed, and this is very much in the English Baroque tradition. Look at that wonderful uh, pediment. We've got an urn, a flaming urn at the top, swags of fruit and flowers, and on either side, wonderful memento mori panels, uh, winged skulls, crossbones, and egg timers an extinguished urn, flaming urn, and uh, a lamp rather, and one in flame. Really is a very fine monument indeed by William Stanton, one of the best um, London uh, monumental masons of the period. But being a recusant really affected their finances. Also prevented this gentry family um, going any further up the pecking order. It takes until the 19th century for this family to enter the aristocracy and to be ennobled. And then there is this monument here, which is to another George Hennage who dies in the 1730s. A wonderful classical piece. There he is. Um, it's a pedimented monument, but there he is under a little canopy in the centre, his bust. Hmm, he died at the age of 57. He's not looking at 57 in that bust, is he? And on either side are the busts and inscriptions commemorating his two wives, both of whom were from prominent Catholic families. Now, the bust on this side is to his first wife, Mary, who was the daughter of the fourth Lord Peter, a very prominent Catholic nobleman. Somebody who was very badly affected by the perjury of Titus Oates. In fact, um, Lord Peter, Mary's father, um, was one of the people that Titus Oates accused um, one of the papists he accused of plotting the downfall of Charles II. And poor old Lord Peter ended his uh, years in the Tower of London, um, expiring there. Now, when Mary dies in 1717, um, George Hennage Esquire then marries Elizabeth, the daughter of Sir Henry Hunloke of Windeworth in Derbyshire, another 
um, another member of a very prominent Midlands Catholic family. Now, during all this period, the Henages are maintaining a Catholic chapel on their estates in Six Hills. And I'll post a link below to this, but I wrote an article about some fantastic uh, medieval uh, vestments that um, survive from their Catholic chapel at Six Hills. So all the way through penal times, they remain recusants um, and maintain a Catholic priest and a Catholic chapel here. Now, George Henage's uh, son marries a, a Italian noble uh, woman, a member of the Fichy family, who were the accounts of Lugano. And so all the family in the uh, rest of the 18th and 19th century use Fichy as their middle name. Now, this monument here is to George Fichy Henage Esquire, who is known to his friends as Fish. Now, if you read the history of Parliament, it's a really interesting account of, of him. He's a, a bit of an oddity by all accounts. He was the first member of a family to become an MP again since the 16th century, and he did so by renouncing his Catholic faith and becoming an Anglican. So very fine, mid-Victorian uh, tablets to him here. Now I've noticed above here, you've got brackets for helms and other heraldic achievements. Though the helms have sadly gone. There are one, two, three of these in the chapel. So originally this space would have been arrayed with even more um, of the family's uh, armorial bearings. So this is the Henage Chapel. So we'll come out of the Henage Chapel now. Now I should say there is still a Catholic chapel here in Hainton in the um, middle of the 19th century it became increasingly inconvenient uh, for the family to trot off to Six Hills which is down the road so they moved the priest, the Catholic priest here and built a Gothic chapel in the grounds of their house. Now we can't see that unfortunately it'd be lovely to be able to see it it's had a recovation, a Vatican II recovation from the photographs I've seen of the inside. Uh, just a plain Gothic box. Now the parish church of St Mary and that little Catholic chapel were the work of an architect called E.J. Wilson. Now I'm just going to go and show you his grave because he's actually buried here too. So we trot out here to the western side of the graveyard <clears throat> and there's this very fine um, gothic table tomb which is E.J. Wilson's grave. So in memory of Edward James Wilson of Lincoln who died September the 8th 1854 aged 67. So Wilson lies in the shadow of the church that he restored and not very far um, from the little Catholic chapel he built here. Now, he was really quite... A... Sir Edward James Wilson was really quite a significant figure in his time. An early Gothic revivalist, an architect, and an antiquarian. He was a fellow of the Society of Antiquaries. It's always very nice to see uh, the grave of a fellow of the Antiquaries. And he was a friend of Edward Charles Pugin, the father of the much better known Augustus Welby Northmore Pugin. And he collaborated with Pugin on a number of his uh, early works on Gothic architecture in the 1820s and the 1830s. So he was really before his time in many respects. So a very fascinating man and, and the church he lies in the shadow of, restored by him in the 1840s 
is something of a testament to his work. He um, mostly mostly uh, built Catholic churches, restored rather a lot of um, churches in Lincolnshire in the 1840s. So um, most of the church is by Wilson, um, but it's worth pointing out the West Tower which is Saxo-Norman work of the late 11th century. Now you can tell it's Saxo-Norman work because if you look at this wall here, there's a wonderful little keyhole window which is characteristic uh, Saxo-Norman work, which is rather lovely. But the rest of the church is Edward Wilson's work. So I'm just going to go around the outside, have a quick skirt around. Oh yeah, I said that the Henage family took until the <laughs> middle of the 19th century for them to be ennobled. They were. Um, Ed, uh, uh, Edward Henage, MP for Grimsby, uh, was made the first Lord Henage. And just to just straight ahead of us now are the graves of him and of his family. There were only three Barons Henage before that bunch of the family died out. It really is a lovely spot here. You can just see little views there towards the Lincolnshire walls. And I'm just going to pan around so we can see the exterior of the church. Um, there's the Henage Chapel straight ahead of us. All those windows by E.J. Wilson. And I'm going to leave us there. So this is St Mary's Church at Hainton in the Lincolnshire Walls. A wonderful example of an estate church with a very, very fine set of monuments indeed to the family that owned it and still own this little village. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.